We're going to talk today about uh, Fibonacci, and I've got some really cool things for you. Lots of people use Fibonacci retracements. That's very common. I'm going to review that. I want to make sure everybody is on the same page. So we'll start with some of the, you know, the light stuff, the beginner stuff. Um, in fact, I'm going to take you right into the roots of where Fibonacci comes from and give you my opinion on it, which, you know, Barry Burns' opinion and a $20 bill will get you a homeopathic amount of caffeine at Starbucks. So take it for what it's worth. Yeah, you can decide whether you agree with me or not. Uh, and a little controversial, basically, the way that I approach Fibonacci, a little controversial, but hey, I've never been one to shy away from controversy. And uh, so we'll show you the roots, we'll take you to the basics, a little intermediate, and then I'm going to show you some advanced stuff. I know everybody loves the advanced stuff. Okay, but not everybody's there. A lot of people are brand new. So. Before we get into the Fibonacci, let's talk about house rules. And I know you've seen these legal disclaimers before, but with these multi-speaker events, people come and go. And so um, it's very important that you understand this. So um, it says no questions till the end. I will stand or I will stay around and answer questions at the end. Um, so if you have any questions as I'm going through this, you know, write them down. You can put them in the chat box if you want to, uh, absolutely. But I probably won't answer them until I get to the end. And that's to just keep on line with our conversation here today, keep it focused, and then make sure we get done on time as well. So um, that's number one, no trading with money you can't afford to lose. Trading is very risky and we never eliminate the risk in trading. We manage it, but we can never eliminate it. So never, 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 how often? Never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. You wanna make sure that you always got money to uh, keep a roof over the table and food on the head. No, it's the other way around. Food, a roof over your head and food on the table. That's it. <laughs> and obviously, I'm a professional speaker. Uh, all information in this presentation is for educational purposes only, not giving any specific investment advice for you. Use it at your own risk. Um, most people don't make any money trading. Just going to throw it out there, be very transparent. And it's a profession. So we do not allow any get rich quick mindsets here. Again, I'd like to be very upfront with you, let you know that this is not something, you know, if you're starting now, you're not gonna be a professional trader in a week, just not gonna happen. It is a real profession that's challenging. And well, basically you gotta be better than most people because most people lose money. There, now that we've started off on a positive note and you all are like super hyped, um, <laughs> but I gotta do that. That's not just for legal purposes, that's for you. That's your, that's education. That's your, that's where your education should always begin. So again, um, I'm Dr. Barry Burns. The, um, you see, they put my uh, credentials in there. So that's great. I'll go through just this real quick. I'm the author of trend trading for dummies. Um, I've helped some other authors write their books. I work with big, um, big companies, brokerage firms, et cetera, out there, soft work, uh, companies get readers choice awards from stocks and commodities magazine blah 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 okay that's all nice and good but now let's get to the bottom line let's teach you some stuff on how to make money in the markets so when we talk about fibonacci the way most people use it. I just want to start here to give you the context because I'm going to go behind the scenes deep into it to show you where it comes from. And you'll be wondering, well, who cares about all these numbers? And so I'm going to start out by showing you the most practical application where most people use it. So they use Fibonacci retracements. And what that is, is you would take your Fibonacci drawing tool and you would click here pull it down, unclick here. So you're clicking from a major high, a big swing high that just stands out in the market visibly to the naked eye, drag it down here. And then when you unclick here, it will draw these levels. So Fibonacci is about support and resistance levels. Alrighty, so these are the ratios that are most commonly used, 23.6. And that literally means that after the market made this low and starts coming up, Okay, once that low is identified, then you would draw your tool. And the question is, well, 
if this is going to trend down, continue a downtrend, I wonder what levels would be good places to short and take a trade in the direction of the downtrend. What price levels? Where are we going to find resistance where the market stops going up and continues to go back down? So that's the practical application. So these are the common levels used, 23.6% of the retrace from here to here. See up here is 100%. So if we go all the way back up to the top, we've retraced 100% of the beginning of the move. Here, 23% of it, 38%, 50, 61, 76. Okay. All right. So that's just the bird's eye view. Now, where do these numbers come from? First of all, the ratios are a secondary application of Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers themselves are a sequence and they were created by Leonardo of Pisa, known as Fibonacci, which means son of Fenocchio. And this is the sequence up here. I actually got it in the header for you. All right, now, it was actually introduced to the West in 1202 by him, but it was actually around before him. So he's not the one who really was the first to identify this mathematical sequence that does have scientific and mathematical significance. It was actually discovered in India long before he came across it, but I believe it was independently uh, discovered. So not to take any credit away from him. So what are these numbers? Well, they're a sequence of numbers beginning with zero and one, and then each subsequent number is the sum of the previous two told you we're going to start right at the beginning so you can see why people found these numbers to be significant so again starts with uh zero and one so you can see it up here in the header because my pointer froze okay so zero plus one equals one so one is the first number of the sequence all right then what you do is you take these two numbers one and one and you add them together one plus one equals two see Everything you needed to know about Fibonacci you learned in kindergarten. Well, we're going to get, again, real complicated here. So then you take these two numbers, one plus two, you add those puppies together, and you get three. So the first three numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are one, two, and follow me carefully here, three. All right. So seriously, Barry, this is just too easy. Well, wait a minute. Let's throw you for a little bit of a side loop here. So now you take these two numbers, two plus three, add those together, and now we skip four, you go to five. So four is not a number in the sequence, but five is. One, two, three, five. Now we're gonna take the last two, three and five, add those together, the next number in the sequence is eight. If you go up here, one, two, three, five, eight. Hmm. Interesting. Five plus eight equals 13. And there you go. Okay. So that's the sequence. And it goes on and on and on into infinity and beyond. So why are the Fibonacci numbers considered significant? So again, independently um, discovered by mathematicians around the world who studied nature. And they found that in natural patterns, the organizing patterns of nature, these numbers, as you measured things in nature, had an organizing principle of these numbers, mathematical. So you could look at, you know, here's several examples. The most famous one is the Nautilus shell. And you'll find that if you mathematically uh, measure the design or the structure of things in nature, these numbers keep coming up. Okay, well, we're not here to uh, be biologists. We're here to make some money trading the markets. And now, so you don't hear too many people who use the Fibonacci sequence anymore. W.D. Gann did, the famous trader W.D. Gann, he actually used the numbers in the sequence. These days, what you're going to hear most about is Fibonacci ratios. So where do these ratios come from? Well, each number in the sequence is approximately, roughly, they're about around 1.618 times greater than the preceding number. So this is the foundational ratio, it's often called the golden ratio or the golden mean in Fibonacci purist, which I am not, by the way. That's the number that they are uh, enamored with. 
The other two key ratios that are then determined by dividing a number in the sequence, uh, two places to the right and three places to the right. So here's what I mean by that. Here's our Fibonacci sequence up here. All righty. And so the 61.8 ratio is found by dividing any number in the sequence that is found one place to the right. So as an example, uh, we'll just start with 13. So 13 divided by 21, 619. Okay, close enough for government work. All right, and then 21 divided by 34, again, 0.617. 34, so here, 34, 55. These are the numbers. Take any number here, divide it by the number one to the right of it, and you get your 618.